I ran into Natalie Tran at the EG conference that I attended earlier this spring. Um, what I think is interesting about Natalie is uh, two, two things. One is the interesting way in which immigration works. Something happens in the world, often it's a bad event, there's a pulse of immigration. In the case of Natalie, I think it had to do with the Vietnamese tragedy and, uh, and the manifestation of boat people. We received boat people here in Canada. Australia obviously received boat people. And then 20 years later, you begin to see the offspring of this immigration and they begin to make their place in these various worlds. Um, it was interesting that uh, we had the uh, sensory perception lady, I think, had uh, some uh, aspect of that story in Natalie as well. Uh, the other thing is that she rose to fame as a video logger. She rose to fame on the internet by posting various kinds of uh, satirical videos and uh, and doing it in a consistent format on what became her own channel. So I uh, met her, I saw some of her work, and I invited her to join us here today. This is Natalie Tran. Uh, now, I have to complain a little bit. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit upset by how I've been put in the last group of speakers, not only at this conference, but in this particular section, because you just put me after two child prodigies. And <laughs> I don't mean to complain, but it's kind of like being the fruit at a buffet table, you know? It's like, it's hard to impress now, everyone's just passed the pancakes and the waffles, mate, but thank you, I'll try. <laughs> I'm, I'm 24 and I've got unfinished degrees. I don't even want to, anyway. <laughs> um, now, unlike many of the really amazing people we've had the pleasure of listening to for the past three days, what I do is amazingly, offensively useless. Um, and I blame this, I suffer from a syndrome. I, uh, hmm. I think I'm a lot funnier than I actually am. <laughs> It results in social, you know, sorry, it's a socially hindering problem and it results in isolation from other children and it's incurable. But uh, I do what a lot of people do, I think Andorra touched on this. Um, people who are a little bit different to other people and don't fit in, we turn to the internet, it, it's good like that. This results in its own set of problems though. I'm that tragic 20-year-old every parent fears their child will become. I sit in my parents' basement with an internet connection and a webcam. You don't even want to know what my future prospects are, but that's me. So uh, I guess to explain a little bit more, I'll show you a video of, of some of the stuff they put online and then I'll, I'll talk about it later. So. Hi, so you know what's a shit present? Soap. If you think about it in the news, it's always a jogger in the morning who finds a body. Here in the reserve that the body was found. The young woman's body was discovered by a passing jogger. Yeah, I was just passing through and I saw something, I didn't know what it was, so I started to have a look. And the six week search for Wally McPine is over. His body was discovered this morning by a passing jogger. I just saw something, I mean, it's kind of funny because this is the second time that I've, second time that I've found something. The body, which is yet to be identified, was discovered in this park this morning by a passing jogger. A jogger? Yeah, I remember you. Yeah, there's another one. Seriously, the reason that I can't ask for directions in person is because it usually goes down like this. I'll walk up to some lady and I'll be like, hey, sorry, could you tell me the way to Peter's Street? And she'll say, uh, if you just keep going straight down the street, you're going to hit George's. Once you hit George's, take a left and then you're going to hit Lavender. Now, once you go down Lavender, you're going to keep going until you hit oh, a laneway. Oh, shit, son. How many directions are you going to give me, man? I stopped listening to you like five directions ago. God, do I look like I'm listening? I hope I look like I'm listening. I think I know why it's so confusing. It's because people add in shit you don't need to know. Like, they tell you the streets you don't want to go down. There, there should be a laneway on your right-hand side. And don't take that laneway. I've been moving furniture around my house and I've been applying what I like to call the fuck measuring tapes, I'm an idiot technique. 
Oh, dude. Fuck measuring tapes. This is like just as accurate. Hey. Awesome, awesome. Just gonna go over here now. Or if you're a little bit more advanced like I am, there's a no, really, I'm very, very stupid technique. Thank God I have 100% body control, man. Look at this. Really, really still. Just keep your hands exactly where they are. And for those Jedi masters out there, there is the yes, really, imaginary lines technique. Longer than the arm, so imaginary line right here, and then... Elbow line right here. All right. Have you ever noticed how it's always a group of really angry factory workers who win the lottery? Why doesn't it go down like this? Workers from a local factory win the $2 million lottery draw. We just won! You want some pearls, motherfucker? Whenever there's a report about, you know, somebody's body being found, they'll always interview the neighbors, and the neighbors always say the same thing. They always say... Oh, so she was such a quiet girl, you know? Oh, she kept to herself mainly, just... It's very devastating, just like any other girl, you know? Just, just very sad. Yeah, very sad. Why are they always quiet and nice? Do loud people not get killed? It's like once, just once, I would love it to go down like this. After being reported missing by friends, the body of the 23-year-old woman was found here on Saturday night. Bound to happen one of these days, if you ask me. Devil's eyes. She had the devil's eyes. She Who? was killed. You had a neighbor who was killed. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm nice to people and I'm alive. You know what I'm saying? And I just between you and me, something wasn't quite right, you know? Just something, something was just a bit... There, over oh. there. That's, uh, something about it was just weird, you know? Just, uh... What was she like? I, I don't know who my neighbors are. She would always park her car in other people's driveways and I was like, one day somebody is going... Anyway, so I was on the computer the other day and the program crashed and the computer was all, oh hey man, sorry about that, here's some numbers that don't mean shit, do you want to send an error report? Discovered near the lake by a passing jogger. To the station by a passing jogger. Yeah, I was just running past, I just, I always go for jogs. I just saw this body and I, I'm kind of get, I keep seeing bodies. By a jogger just this morning. I think I might start joking at night, yeah. Um, so yeah, basically I make videos about things that I notice in life, little awkward moments. I play all the parts and I upload them onto YouTube, which pretty much puts me in the same rank as, you know, laughing babies and, and dogs that fall over when people say she's a YouTube celebrity. I'm like, that's a really big oxymoron. But anyway, um, so yeah, I put them up on YouTube and I hope that people can relate to them. And you may be thinking that's really weird. Well, I blame these people. These people are my parents. And uh, this is them with my sister, 1981. I think they left too big a gap between us, you know what I'm saying? So, but my parents and my, my sister are the funniest people. I know. Um, they came to Australia in 1981 from Vietnam. And you know, I read a lot of books and I see a lot of documentaries about people who talk about being in a family that are new to a country. And they talk about the trauma, they talk about how sad it is and the experience, but one of the things they never talk about is how funny it is. I mean, when your parents are different to other people's parents, it's hilarious. You know, my parents would often come home and just be like, have you noticed that other people do this? That's weird. And um, they taught me to step back and observe people's behavior. So I guess that's where my videos come from. I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever watched a love scene in a movie with your parents, but I'm telling you, if you watch it with a bunch of conservative Vietnamese parents in their 60s, it's, it's a form of torture, it's awful. But my parents basically brought to my attention that awkward moment you feel, you know, when you're watching a love scene with somebody, and it's just, oh, it's just painful. And the only thing you can do is just talk about anything else except for what's happening on screen. So it'll go down like this. Yeah. I can't believe this is happening right now. I've waited so long for this moment. Kiss me. Kiss me now. Hey, I had those chicken noodles the other day? Oh yeah, really. Mmm. I like what you've done with the place. Is this a new is this a new thing? Yes, we are thinking of adding another room. Yeah. 
But yeah, no, my parents really brought that to my attention. I thought that was just a cultural thing, but then I remember watching a love scene with a friend the other day, and uh, I realized that awkwardness transcends culture, so that was, <laughs> that was a nice thing. But I always, yeah, I, I kind of always thought it was a cultural thing, but I think it has a, a lot to do with it. For example, like today I saw a man, he was walking down the street, and he did you know, restricted movement, you know, it's kind of weird, and it's, it was hot outside today, we were inside, but if you went outside for a bit, it was really pleasant and hot. He did a little bit of this, he was like, ah, and he did one of these. And I noticed something about him, I thought, if I'd had any other parents in the world, I wouldn't know what your deal was, I would just think you were some really sweaty, weird man, but I, I shared a connection with him. He had these, I don't know if you can see him, and I was like, ah, your parents, they make you wear these when you travel as well, huh? <laughs> yes. My parents just make me notice how stupid people become when they travel. You know, people get really paranoid. Everyone, oh, that's not gonna, that's awkward. Um, everyone's gonna, everyone's out to rob you. You know, it's like when you pack for a trip. You ever notice all of a sudden you read a lot of books when you travel? You're just like, I read so much. I need to bring 10 books with me this trip. And all the ugly sweaters that you'd never wear. <laughs> Holiday time, because overseas, ugly just doesn't matter. It's all good. But. My parents made me notice all this really strange stuff, and I'm really grateful for it because it's, it's you know, they're moments that I can share. For example, my mother's learning uh, English at the moment, and I'm really proud of her, but one of her classes is computer classes, and I, she just comes home and she asks me questions, and I don't even know how to answer her because it's, it's so true. She'll be like, Nat, They've been showing us around the keyboard. It's been good. But sometimes I look at the keyboard and I think, why do you exist? And I'm like, you're right, so I can't help but think, you know, sorry. Hi, I'm insert. I haven't been used in nine months. Every time someone presses me, shit disappears off the screen. I don't know. I don't even know what I do, hey? I don't know. Hi, I'm Caps Lock! Oh. Hi, I'm Caps Lock. Um, <laughs> sometimes people use me when they're typing, and then they go to press the A with their pinky, and then they accidentally hit me, and they just keep typing, and they're really happy, and then they notice they've hit me, and they're like, what the hell, Caps Lock? <laughs> I feel so used, you know? But, yeah. My parents are always bringing to my attention the little things like this, and I. I this is the stuff that I try and share on the internet. And so I'm going to have a little bit of a fangirl moment here and say I heart the internet because it lets you do all this kind of sharing. And I mean, I've had people who write into me about their own moments that they've noticed, and it's really great. I get video responses from all over the world. And I mean, the internet gets a bit of a bad rap, uh, bad rap sometimes, and I'm not going to lie, I think. I can safely say I see a really bad side of the internet as well. You know, I receive more hate mail than BP ever will. I receive more, <laughs> I do, I receive more threats than antivirus software. When you hit porn sites, you would not even believe. And I mean, as silly as it sounds, I, being a girl on the internet who talks is really hard, you know. So many of my hits get dismissed by mainstream media, by friends who I thought were going to be really supportive. You know, I go see all their shit bands, but, you know, they turn around and they say, it's easy for you, you're an Asian girl. I mean, guys in basements watch your geez, you know. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you were a guy, it'd be so much harder for you to get noticed. I mean, I'm going to say that's, that's wrong, because if you look at the top subscribers on YouTube, only three are girls. The rest are all men. And I think that... People forget, and I mean, I know this, 70% of the people who watch me are young women. They're girls from the age of 12 up to women the age of 25. And if you just took the tiniest amount of video responses or comments or email, emails they send me, you'd realize, shit, women are really funny. And I think people just forget this, and it's a little bit upsetting, and this conference has been so pro-female that I thought it would be a good place to, to say it, because, I mean, women have to be funny. We pretend to like each other every single day. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really sorry, I don't have anything um, revolutionary to say, and I don't have any ideas that haven't already been turned into infomercial products. How can I cook while exercising while watching TV? And um, yesterday, Josie kind of already took away my whole stint, I was going to throw condoms at the audience, but she just had a whole bucket full, and I've got like two. <laughs> 
don't laugh, I've been saving these since I was like 13. <laughs> you can have one. <laughs> but now I, I just thought I would I'd leave it with this, you know, life is fun, the world's population is hilarious and women make up a huge part of that population and I'm glad that we live in a time where we can share all of that. Thank you. Yeah, let's have a shot with your cap lock here. That was so funny. Oh, thank you. Do you want to insert or cap lock? I was good. Mm. Actually, no, insert's insert. funnier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. 